Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk about the Model T, and then we'll come back in here and we'll touch on a few other projects as well. Okay, so if you saw my last build video on the Model T, you would have seen that I rebuilt the wooden frame for the roof. It came out pretty good. Uh, so I used oak. Um, there are kits that you can buy, and I noticed the kits were made from oak and ash. And so I talked to the guy at the wood supply store, um, and he said that oak should be fine. Uh, and also they didn't have ash in the correct thickness. Um, the place I get this from is really good. They do have lots of different types of wood and different sizes. And uh, this is what's called a 6-4 uh, board, which means it's 6 fourths thick, so like an inch and a half. It's actually a little bit thinner because all wood is thinner when it dries, just like a 2 by 4 is not actually 2 inches by 4 inches, it's smaller. Uh, but this is the same size that they used originally, it's the same thickness, it matches. So that worked really well. Um, the kit, if you were to buy it, I think it was about $650 uh, for the kit for the wood. Um, but I don't know, that's without shipping or tax, and I don't know how long that would take. I think it's made after you order it, so I'm sure there's a bit of a lead time on that. I spent roughly $150 uh, on the wood to build it myself. And then it took me, I mean, I probably spent four or five days uh, building it a few hours each day. But it came out good. I'm happy with the way that it came out. And then uh, the next step will be the headliner. So the reason I didn't put the vinyl on top yet is because there's an order that you have to go through to do it properly. And the headliner, well first of all, the material on the sides wraps around this lip and gets attached here. And then um, there's a a bead that goes along there, like this, I forget what this is called, but there's a little piece of trim like this that goes around there. And then the headliner goes on top of that, and the headliner also has strips of fabric that attach to these cross members. So you have to attach that from up above, and then you have to staple the headliner in from up above. And then once the headliner's in, then I can put the vinyl roof on it. So that'll be in the next video, hopefully I'll get the Headliner in, the top portion of the material for the interior, all installed, and then install the vinyl over the outside of the frame. And then I also am having the glass cut for the windshield. So I need to clean up these frames and paint them and then have the glass installed. And so hopefully that'll be done in time for that video as well. So I do plan on uh, moving forward with this one. So hopefully next Wednesday's build video will also be on the Model T. And hopefully, like I said, that will be the headliner going in, some of the upholstery going in on the inside, and then the vinyl top on the roof. And then maybe even the little sun shade, little awning thing, because I have the fabric for that as well. But so that's all looking really good, making really good progress on this. Um, I'm gonna update you on a few other projects really quick. And then what we'll do is we'll come back out here and I'll do a cold start on this car. It sat for about a week since I started it last. So I'll kind of show you the process of actually getting it running after it sat for a little while. It's not as easy as just turning it over. So anyway, we'll go over that in a few minutes. But first, we'll talk a little bit about the 356 and the Land Cruiser. So the 356... You know, nothing has happened since I put in the doors, the door frames and windows, and kind of finished the cosmetic side of it. But like I said before, now we're gonna move on to the mechanical side of things, which is going to be the brakes, the transmission, and rebuilding the engine, and then going through the fuel system, the fuel tank, and all the fuel lines. Uh, so that's gonna happen very soon. Uh, and actually, there's going to be, suppo there's supposed to be an article coming out soon on this car in the 356 registry magazine. So that's pretty cool. And I'll give you an update whenever that does come out. I think it'll be a month or two from now. Uh, but so the 356, uh, nothing has happened recently, but I will be back on it very soon. 
Uh, and then for the Land Cruiser, uh, I've got several comments from my last video, kind of recommendations on how I should move forward. And I think some of it is pretty good advice. So the plan on this one is I still need to repair the floor pan there and I need to do this rocker panel on that side. I need to replace that outer panel and get all that in. And then I have a little bit of small stuff to patch. There's some little holes here on the body that need to be patched and along this rail. Uh, and then the plan was to start doing the, the body work, start doing all the filler on the side and prepping it so I could paint the whole thing and then put it back on the frame completely painted. Uh, a lot of people recommended that I put it on the frame first because once I bolt it down, I may need to shim it and I should test fit the roof and everything like that before I do the final paint. And that, that does make sense. So I think what I'm going to do is repair the metal, like I said, but then I'm going to get the, I think I'm going to use Raptor liner to get, and get it tinted to the same color that the truck's going to be painted. So I'll probably paint the underside with the Raptor liner and paint the interior floor with the Raptor liner, get all of that done, and then put the frame or put the body back on the frame before I go through all the Bondo and, and body work to get it, the final prep to paint it. That's gonna take a long time, that final prep. So I like the fact that I can get it on the frame sooner and get it all in one space instead of having this take up one space and the frame take up one space. And then once it's on the frame, then I'm not um, pressured as much to, to rush through and then I can take my time and make sure that everything fits correctly, the doors, the top, all that stuff. And I can do the final prep work on the outside of the body and then uh, paint that uh, later with it on the frame. So uh, that's the plan for the Land Cruiser. And like I said, there'll be videos coming up soon on the 356, but the Model T uh, has definitely got the most attention lately. The channel is continuing to grow at a much faster rate. And it's almost entirely due to people wanting to see more Model T content. So I'm going to focus on this one for a little while. Uh, I'm also very excited about driving it because now that it runs, um, it, I am really getting excited and looking forward to actually taking it on a real drive. So having the windshield in and having the interior finished, and then ultimately I have to go through the rear end before I can drive it very far. Um, but I, I, I do want to keep moving forward on it and get this thing back on the road quickly. So. Now, what we'll do is I'll kind of walk you through the process for starting it after it's sat for a while. So, it leaks, you know, it leaks a little bit of oil, not too bad, but it leaks uh, fuel. Uh, so, if I don't turn the fuel off, then fuel will leak out of the carburetor. I have ordered a new bowl for it and some more gaskets, but I think it might be that the, the float, I've adjusted the float too, but still, I think maybe the float needs to be adjusted more. But anyway, Maybe it's just very common that they always leak fuel, so you have to turn the, the fuel off. Um, and so the only shutoff valve now for the fuel is on the bottom of the tank. So I have to crawl under the car, turn the fuel on, let it fill up the carburetor, uh, and then prime it, and then we'll start cranking it over, and then hopefully it'll run. Um, I have ordered a new shutoff valve that's going to go here, so that'll be nice to have. And like I said, I ordered a new bowl and some new gaskets so maybe i can stop that from leaking as well but um okay so we'll go ahead and go through the process here so unfortunately um the valve is under the center of the tank so the only way to do it is actually get under the car so a little inconvenient but when compared to you know hooking a harness to your horse and buggy it's probably still uh, a pretty good process much faster. Okay, so you can kind of see there's a valve here. So we'll turn that on and then you can see, so I've got a new muffler here. So that's one of the things you'll get to see today. You'll get to hear the difference with the new muffler. Okay, so the fuel is on. Oh, and another thing you can look for once it starts running the amp meter has started to show a positive charge. I mentioned in a previous video that I needed to check to see if the generator was working. Uh, it, it apparently it started working or the gauge started working because I didn't do anything to it, but all of a sudden it started to show a positive charge. I'm guessing that maybe the brushes inside the generator uh, after letting it run for a while kind of cleaned themselves off enough and um, 
and now it's it's working. So we'll kind of give this a second to make sure. It looks like we're getting fuel. You can see there's even a little bit of leak here. Um, so yeah, it, it leaks. It leaks fuel. It leaks oil. Uh, it's 98 years old, so I guess that's to be expected. But all right, and it is just gravity fed. There's no fuel pump for those of you that don't know. The fuel is just gravity fed to the carburetor. And in fact, if you drive up too steep of a hill, it'll die because the engine will be, a, be higher than the fuel level. So some people have to back up hills. Um, and in later versions of the car, they installed the fuel tank here so that it could gravity feed straight down. And then they moved the coil boxes into the engine bay. Um, one other note while we're letting the fuel fill up is the coil boxes. So for those of you who don't know, this is a wire for one of the dash lights. For those of you who don't know, these are the coil boxes. There's one box for each spark plug. And when it's running, I'll try to put the camera down here and maybe if it's idling slow enough, we can watch the sequence of them buzzing. But one buzzes at a time. So the timer on the front of the engine, as it rotates, it triggers each one of these coil boxes, which triggers the spark to the spark plug um, and, and makes it fire for that cylinder. But you can actually, this is what makes that buzzing sound when you turn the key on, and you can see them buzzing. So I'll check to see, I'll try to get it to idle slow enough, and then maybe we can see that while it's running. But so we should have fuel now. So the next thing to do is to pull on this, which is the choke, and then crank it over a few times. Um, and that's gonna help prime it. So I'll try to do that while holding the camera here. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Okay, so uh, that's the only time that you want to use your right hand, and that's only okay because the ignition is turned off. You don't want to use your right hand when the ignition is on because if it starts, it could break your hand. And also, when you pull started, you have to be careful about where your thumb is, so if it kicks back, it doesn't break your hand. So it's, there's a lot of safety issues when hand cranking it, but we're going to use the starter today, so that's not an issue. So. I basically just prime it like that to help save the battery because the battery's kind of weak even at full charge but okay so we primed it we got the fuel on we're gonna turn it to battery you're gonna hear the buzzing and you can see that one that far end is the one that's sparking we're going to make sure the timing is all the way retarded. We're going to give it some fuel and we'll probably mess with this as we're cranking it. And then the starter button is down here on the floor. So I'm going to hit this with my foot to start it. And while I do that, I'll probably still be pulling on the choke even a little bit more just to help kind of prime it. It seems to like that. Oh, look who it is. It's Walter. Let's say hi to Walter and then we'll start it up. Walter, Walter, come here, buddy. It's been a long time. Long time no see, Walter. Good to see you, Walter. Okay, so let's see if this will start. So, retarded, throttle, foot on the pedal, you're gonna crank it over and pull on the choke. See, the starter, it's always, even with the charged battery, it cranks pretty slow. So you want to get as close as you can by hand first. Nothing yet. There 
we go. We're close now. I may have flooded it. Yeah, it's close now. There we go. So I was pouring a little bit more on the choke. So I'm still very new to this, so I don't know if I'm giving it too much gas or not enough. So I'm kind of trying both ways, but we're getting close now. Okay, so there you go. That's what a cold start is like. I showed you uh, the hand crank in the last update video, which is very easy. Now that it's warmed up like that, you can crank it over just like I did before. Walter, hush, hush, hush. And it'll start right up. Uh, but I thought you might be interested to see a more in-depth process of what it actually looks like to start it. Um, and like I said, when it's a little bit cold like that, it takes a little while and I'm still new to it. So I'm still figuring out exactly how much I should prime it and how much I should choke it, things like that. But anyway, that's it for the Model T. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Bye.